Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to set up and use the super trend indicator on TradingView for day trading. If you guys are new to trading or just looking to become more profitable, please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on your notifications for daily videos on how to become a better investor. Also, if you guys are interested in a $35,000 deposit bonus through Fairdesk, make sure to check out my link below and let's get started. Now to get this on your chart, I want you guys to go over here to indicators, metrics and strategies. And I just want you guys to type in the word super trend, make it all one word, because if you guys separate it into two, it is not going to work. Afterwards, under community scripts, you're going to see it right here by Kivon. It has almost 40,000 likes. And I want you guys to click on this exactly one time. Now, you're going to see this added on. You're going to see a whole bunch of buy and sell signals. I want you guys to understand what you guys are seeing at this moment in time. What the super trend indicator is, it's a popular tool used by traders for analyzing the price trends of financial markets. This could be cryptocurrencies like what we're currently looking at as far as Bitcoin. This could be trading gold, Forex, commodities. It can be used for a lot of different things in the financial markets, but it's basically telling you downtrend versus uptrend buy is an uptrend sell is a downtrend okay now it's going to give you those buy and sell signals but it's up to you to not follow them blindly even though just the base setup here you can see has worked out very well for bitcoin in the past so i zoomed in a little bit so you guys could see this a little bit better currently i'm at 175 percent but you guys may see this at 100 percent every now and again and you can see how the signals are not too easy to see but for today's video, I want you guys to be able to see everything here. So I want you guys to go over here to super trend and I want you guys to click on the settings button. From here, we're going to be going over everything on this page. You're going to see the indicator time frame, ATR period, source, ATR multiplier, and some of these check boxes down below. So when it comes to the indicator time frame, this is just like what you guys have been seeing on the moving averages. If you guys want to see the signals on different time frames, you guys are going to go over here and change the time frame. So we're on the Bitcoin daily chart, but maybe I want to see what's happening on the one hour. Uh, I don't recommend this. And here's why you can see how the signals are kind of wonky. There's kind of false signals all throughout here. This is not what you guys usually want to see. So instead, I would keep it at chart when you guys first sign up on for this. And then I'll go over here to the 15 minute chart. Hit auto, kind of zoom out just a little bit. And then from here, you want to go to a higher time frame than the one you currently are on. So if you're on a 15 minute time frame, you want to use the 30 minute, the 40 minute, the one hour, two hour, three hours. That's going to be much better. So you guys can go over to the 12 hour one and you can see the sell signals, the buy signals and things like that. And you're going to see that some work and some don't. So you guys are going to have to look to see which one's the best. I don't use the 12 hour. Normally, I prefer the four hour and you can see how Look at that. Nice sell signal, nice buy signal, nice sell signal that went a little bit lower. Buy signal worked out. Sell signal did not work out here. So you guys have to be careful. But of course, you guys know there's a whole bunch of drama going on in the world of cryptocurrencies these days. However, I would still say I prefer to use chart most of the time. But if you guys want to have that different viewpoint, that's going to be something that you guys are going to enjoy immensely here. Now, this is Bitcoin all the way back to 2021. So this is a lot of data here. But you guys can clearly see some sell signals, some buy signals here. And this is just the base default settings, okay? So next we're gonna be talking about the ATR period. ATR stands for average true range. It's a, mar it's a measure of market volatility. Um, all you guys have to know is how much, uh, how, many, uh, how much data is actually going into some of these selling and buying signals. Most of you guys are gonna keep this at 10, but I will give you guys some opportunities to have different um, numbers here in a few minutes. I'll be giving you guys maybe about five different combinations for all three of these to make you guys just have a little bit of an easier time figuring out which way you guys want to be using this especially if you guys are using this with stocks versus cryptocurrencies and things of that nature okay or day trading uh versus maybe some uh shorter term day trades like scalps and things of that nature okay so afterwards we have source this is basically what data is being inserted into the atr period not how much data so you guys have seen this, I think, a lot as well. If you guys want the source to be open, this is the opening price. So that's the number that's going to be used in here. So if I were to go back over here and we looked at this recent candle bar, if I just hover it over it, it looks like the open was at $25,925.54. That'd be the number that's being used. Now, you can go high, low, close, high, low, two. The two just stands for how many of these are being put into it. So you see high, low, close three, open, high, low, close four, high, low, close, close four right here, okay? So 
Now, I would say most of you guys want to keep this at high low too. So that's like the uh, high and the low. You get the mid range right there. You can also just go open, high, low, see which one works the best for you. I will be giving you guys some options for this one. But normally, I would say you guys are going to be looking at high, low or maybe close. I think close is probably the standard amongst a lot of investors out there. But if you guys want just a little bit more um, of a mid range here, high, low is going to work out pretty well for you. Afterwards, you have the ATR multiplier. Basically, this is a variable that the trader can set to calibrate the sensitivity of the indicator. A higher value here makes the indicator less sensitive to price changes, and whereas a lower value makes it more sensitive. So do you guys want more signals or less? Um, normally, I think that having a higher number here is gonna be working out. So you guys can see we're at a three. One of my favorite setups here is the 50 and then the 5.1. And you're going to see what this does to the amount of signals here, okay? And you can see, well, maybe it might work out a little bit on the 15-minute chart since we're on the daily. There's not nearly as many signals. You have this big sell signal here. You got this buy signal right here that was kind of a, a fluke because of, the again, the volatility because of all this news with the SEC. But you guys are seeing that, hey, overall, these are the signals you're looking for. Uh, and usually what you're going to be doing is looking for breakdowns following those signals, but usually looking for a four-hour chart. I'll explain this concept uh, a little bit later here, okay? But you guys can have different settings for this, and I'll make your lives just a little bit easier, okay? Now, we're going to go back over here and say reset the settings here. And you can see how there's many more settings there. Now, afterwards, you have the change ATR calculation method. If you guys actually do want to change this ATR calculation method, let me just go over here very fast right here and you're going to have the switch up just a little bit not what's well, not even switching up now so there's not too much of a change here that's the smallest you guys can see it move just a little bit just a little bit that's all it does i would normally recommend keeping this on because the signal just tends to come just a little bit earlier uh for a 15 minute chart or four hour chart it might come like a one to two candle bars earlier and it's kind of nice to have that heads up before everybody else if i do say so myself next you're going to have show buy sell signals if you guys just don't want to see the buy and sell signals just the little green circles you guys can check this box off um normally what i'll do is i'll have this on but the following one here which is the highlighter I'm actually going to turn this one off and you guys don't actually have to see the colors here based off of which way the mo motion is going. So if you guys don't want to see the high little color green, you can also do that. Uh, otherwise, what you guys may do is end up just coming over here to style and afterwards you guys can actually just turn off all these based off of what you want to see. So if you guys don't want to see the line, the line will go away. If you guys don't want to see the uptrend begins, that's the little circle that's kind of behind that the buy that you're not going to be able to see right now. If you guys don't want to see the buy, if you guys don't want to see the downtrend, right? Everything right here. Other than that, you guys can take apart some of these dots over here. You guys can take away the highlighter. So if you guys don't want to see much, you guys can actually take away the majority of stuff here. There you go. And all you're having is buy sell signals and it's not taking up nearly as much room on your guys' charts. For now, again, I'm going to go back over here and reset the settings just so it looks like what you guys might want to have it look like. So what are the best strategies for using the super trend indicator for day trading? So the first one is very simple. If you guys go over here to a five minute chart or a 15 minute chart, a lot of times you guys are going to be using this for scalping, maybe for holding up to an hour. You guys can see if you follow this sell signal that started off right here. If you made the maximum amount of profit, you're looking at 0.75. Of course, if you guys are scalping Bitcoin, you guys are most likely using leverage. But if you guys are doing options or stocks, you guys may be um, using leverage there as well. But maybe you guys are just doing options instead, okay? So an easy way is just to follow some of these clear instructions and making sure you guys have a clear stop loss. And then you guys are going to be more happy that way. You can see not all of these signals work out. So you guys can change some of those settings we talked about before. And I'll give you guys some settings that may help. However, you guys can see a lot of these moves have been working out very well. Some of them don't, of course, but the majority of them are working out okay. And again, remember, you guys can change some of these numbers. Like instead of the ATR multiplier of three, I can go to five. And you may get rid of some of these false signals. And then voila, you have a sell signal there that worked out. You had a buy signal here that worked out as far as a scalp, a sell signal that did not work out here, did not work out, okay? Want to make sure you guys understand that not everything is going to be perfect. A buy signal that did not, a sell that did not, a buy that did not, and a good buy one that worked over here. So this is where you guys have to have your good stop losses, and you guys are going to be using common sense here as far as what some of these um, 
technical analysis of what's going on. Uh, over the past few days, as you guys know, especially in this time zone, we've had the SEC suing everybody, and there's been a lot of carnage all over the place. So if there's a bunch of big news events, probably best not to actually use a super trend. But if everything's just going hunky-dory and there's no big news, you day-to-day -day trading, you guys are going to see a lot more better trades like this. We can short down here, buy up there, short down here, buy up here, short. Uh, I guess it did work out for a little bit, but not as much as you would like, you know. So as long as there's not any big news, this one will work out perfectly fine for you. And you can move around from the 15-minute chart to the one-minute chart, everything here. But you guys are going to be adjusting these based off of... Um, the data you have at hand and the different types of things you're trading, like stocks, gold, cryptocurrencies, you name it, uh, you're going to have to adjust the super trend to kind of match some of those, okay? Next of all, uh, next, excuse me, I want you guys to go back to the daily chart here, and you guys are going to be looking at the base setup, or if you guys want to, you guys can go back to the other one with the 50 and the 5.1. For now, I'm going to stick to the regular one, so I'm just going to hit cancel. Excuse me. But the big thing here is, is if you're on the daily chart and you see that we're currently in a downtrend, you're going to be more likely to short during this time frame here, okay? So, for instance, you can see there was a breakdown right here. You guys are going to be more likely to short that breakdown. Or, better yet, if you guys go back over here and you can, maybe if I can just do this for you guys now. The sell signal really started right there. Go to the 15-minute chart. Zoom out just a little bit. Okay, sell signal really hit right there. During this time frame, you're more likely to follow the sell signals on the 50-minute chart after this because you know overall you're storing a longer-term sell signal that's on the daily and the four-hour charts. So if you would have bought right there, it wouldn't have worked out. All right, so this was a false signal. This one, however, worked out very well because it was following the overall downward trend. Okay? Now, this buy signal ended up working out. That's very nice. Maybe we were bouncing off of a support level of something. You can see right here, this sell signal. Well, actually, maybe I should draw it like this. There we go. This sell signal didn't work out too well. Maybe, I guess, uh, a teeny bit, but not much. This one worked out okay for scalpers. This one worked out. You wouldn't have been following the buy signal here. The sell signal worked out for you. The buy signal, if you wanted to take it, the sell signal right here worked out for you. A buy signal, if you wanted to take it again, I wouldn't have. But you guys can see right here, unless maybe something was on the four-hour chart. But you can see overall, the majority of the sell signals actually did work out here just pretty well. I would say the majority. And that's how you guys are going to be able to use this strategy. And eventually, when you do break down, of course, you can see right here, that's going to be your large opportunity. I don't like to just go off of the sell signals though, like each sell signal. Um, this is how a lot of traders do use it. I would look for a breakdown and a sell signal. So you have the sell plus a breakdown. That's more of what I'm looking for because I want to be very um, certain. But if you guys do want to follow every signal, I think the big thing here, no matter what you guys are looking for, is just to know where to have your stop loss. So if you were to buy right here and you see that buy signal, you guys are normally going to have uh, some type of support limit where you guys are going to say, hey, this is where I need my stop loss to be. In this circumstance, it looks like the support was kind of around here, around 28,212, or maybe all the way down here, 28,122. And as long as it doesn't break down below this, you can continue to hold. Same thing right here. If you guys were to open up a short position, that stop loss is going to be right up here. And again, you're going to follow this step by step. But if you guys were to sell right here, that stop loss is maybe just right there, or you could even move it right there, okay? So not every trade is going to be 100% accurate, but if you guys follow the overall trends here, like this is the four-hour trends, you guys are going to be much more likely to not make mistakes and much more likely if you guys do have a trade that goes in the wrong way. As long as it doesn't hit that stop loss here, you can see how it kind of bounce back up. That stop loss in the four hour chart might be way up here. You can see as long as you wait, you're usually going to be doing just fine. And this one, you had about only four to eight hours of actually making a profit. So you guys would have had to make a stop loss or maybe move your stop loss up because if you bought down here, the stop loss would be way down here as it moves back up. You guys can be using other indicators. For instance, maybe on this one here when we had the buy signal right there, 15 minute chart, just so I know where everything is. Okay. What I might be doing is using a simple Fibonacci extension to try to make my life just a little bit easier. Okay. 
and you can see some resistance right there. So then maybe that was your price target. Maybe that was your price target, but it happened after that initial buy and you can see how it actually ended up making you a little bit of money on the downward side. If you saw this sell signal here for whatever reason, you know, you could always just put a Fibonacci retracement here. It doesn't have to be that complicated. All right, so next I want you guys to go over here to the 15 minute chart because I think this is what a lot of you guys are going to be scalping on. And I'm going to give you guys a few different opportunities or a few different choices here as far as how you guys want to set up the ATR period, the source, and the ATR multiplier. The first setup that I think you guys are going to like is the ATR period of 10. The source is going to be closed. We talked about this earlier. And the ATR multiplier is going to be two. This is going to be going to give you guys more signals here. And you guys can see those signals here. So, if you guys want to have more signals and have better opportunities to scalp going into something, you guys can be using this. I would recommend doing this on the 15, one hour or two hour charts. If you guys are looking for a lot more signals, uh, I tend to want less signals, but if you guys want more, this can obviously help you guys out. Just make sure you guys understand the overall technical analysis going on. Now, the next one here is going to be an ATR period of 14. The source is still going to be closed to me and the ATR multiplier is going to be 1.5. So even more signals. Okay. Now, again, this is going to give you way, way more signals. I don't necessarily like these, but I have a few here that have way, um, way higher ATR multipliers just to help you guys out. Now, the next one is going to be an ATR period of seven. We're going to be source close and the ATR multiplier of 2.5. And there you go. You have a few more signals right there. Um, one thing I would say here, guys, is if you guys want to, you guys can always move around the ATR period, but definitely have some fun with the ATR multiplier, even with just having an ATR period of seven. If you have the ATR multiplier at five, you guys can see a lot different moves here. So I recommend changing up the ATR multiplier a lot more. OK, afterwards, you have an um, ATR period of five, ATR multiplier of three. And you have the source also being closed and you can see right here this one worked out very well for the hour chart just look at that beauty okay some good buys some good sells some okay buys right there but yeah this one works out very well so if you wanted to use this for the bitcoin one hour chart that could help you out a lot especially when you guys are trying to make um, some day trades on just an hour chart or maybe a two hour chart okay next up here we're going to be going over to the atr period of 14. We're going to have an ATR multiplier of three. So that's staying the same. And the source is going to be high low two. Okay. So this gives you a lot more signals here. Again, these are working out fairly well, but you guys can see there's some false signals in here as well. Again, we have had some crazy news. So bear with me on that one. Um, but you guys can see the sells have been working. The buys have been working. The buys worked over here. The sell did not work here because this was a big old dump. And you guys understand not to buy it during a dump like that. Uh, unless you guys are, you know, um, more advanced, I would say. But you guys can see sales, buys, and it work out. And this is where you guys might change it overall. We're saying, hey, I'm getting too many false signals. Maybe I want to jump this up to five. And then maybe you can see right there, sell, sell signal worked out a little bit better. This one did not, but the sales overall are working better. And you guys know that the sales are going to work out a little bit better sometimes because in the longer term, we're still on that overall downtrend that we have been talking about. Okay. So a few of the ones that you guys may want to know about here. Um, really is just changing this from 10 to 14 a lot, but really playing around with the ATR multiplier based off of your, your, you know, your comfort zone here. If I even go over here to the weekly chart, you guys can see that buy signal that worked out very well here. This one did not work out so well so far. And again, this is because we had that huge level of resistance here, but I hope you guys have understood like the basic grasp of the super trend. And if you guys have any questions, please let me know. I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day and please consider subscribing.